Time and time again, we see justifications for the terrible conditions arising in America, whether it's the 1930s Great Depression, the 2008 housing crash, or the general clown fiesta of the modern age. Reactionaries and their sympathizers, and everyone else in between, come jumping to the defense of any anti-capitalist criticism, cycling the rhetoric from quiet quitting to blaming millennials or Gen Z for some market crashing, to blaming migrants just looking for a good life to live. Capitalism supporters and apologists ride on language to milk the output of the thinking they may need to put or show on others. Justifications for the system via word choice is no new practice. However, any reasonable person in these so-called United States can see these stances for what they are. In my opinion, what many of us have a truly hard time seeing is just how much better we deserve, just how much we're struggling. We shouldn't need to beg and despair and then ultimately accept our terrible conditions as a prerequisite of our existence. Hi everybody, welcome back to another jog video, hope you're doing well. This video is going to be about why not just Americans, but all workers around the world deserve way better than what they're currently being paid on average, but we're going to take a focus on America. In America alone, the richest country in the history of the world, but also one of the most exploitive and oppressive governments on the planet, wields low wages and, sal and low salaries to enslave not just workers outside the nation, but also the nation's own workers. Unsurprisingly, this enslavement incurs and is designated as such because the interaction of the worker with society requires currency to exchange the goods and services the average person requires or desires. There's little to no escape out of laboring for scraps. Wages already exemplative of horribly degrading conditions many workers face have stagnated significantly, unsurprisingly, in the natural deterioration of capitalism. Alright, so starting with the first section, I decided to take a look at different ways of examining statistics and seeing if there's a certain avenue to kind of tackle this issue. I wanted to start with minimum wage because that seems to be the kind of st staple uh, metric for this issue. The federal minimum wage in 2023 is still at $7.25. $7.25. A couple green rectangles and shiny metal circles for an hour of your labor. That means after working for 60 minutes long, the bare minimum legally workers are required to be paid is only $7.25. That means for the dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of thousands of the worker, the average worker puts out, that same worker putting out all that money for this business receives a wage so little it might as well not be labeled a wage. Our dollar value has reached a major low, yet we do not see the issue with continuing to call it a wage at all. Then, noticing this, it didn't look so good, so I tried pivoting to productivity. My next target metric was looking at this. I tried looking at uh, an organization called Trading Economics. Totally not sus at all. I arrived at this site, which collected all labor except farm labor for some reason, which is a significant portion of this country's labor, and that's only the excluded category mentioned. Labor such as motherhood or fatherhood are also not included in statistics such as these and others, and I would argue this is yet another oversight. The About page claims they use official data, which is not so re reliable as we've taken a look. Even were, if we were to take a look at this data, what we find is that the average worker in America produces significantly more than we ha what we have in the past. Labor productivity, one metric to measure this growth, is calculated by an index of output value over an index of input hours. So basically just how much the profit the worker makes for any business with the time said worker has. And with each generation, more and more value is created. This relationship carries from baby booners baby boomers, excuse me, to Gen X, to millennials, to Gen Z. A strong and solid trend of increasing productivity is seen, excluding farm labor. What we see is a massive increase in worker productivity over time, with the highest worker output in almost a century, and funnily enough, the, wor the lowest worker output was in the 1950s and the decade during that time. Uh, you know, In other words, according to the labor productivity for the last 
70 plus years, the baby boomers were putting out significantly less labor productivity than the succeeding generations, literally the lowest out of all four of those. Just so damn juicy knowing any critics of younger people fighting for their worth are produced, they, those people were producing substantially less, uh, you know, amounts of labor. And uh, also when, you know, people look back, uh, reactionaries, older reactionaries, and say when times were, are better, they're not aware of how little, you know, they're so little aware of how it was only better for them. And that better was because they weren't doing anywhere near the amount of work that we've been doing. So after taking a look at productivity and realizing the arguments favor us younger people way more and certainly don't favor the older generations, I decided to take a look at inflation. And even in America, within recent years, pay rates have climbed in response, allegedly, to inflation, but the prime culprit is record-breaking corporate profits, most or many of which has been taken as wage theft from its own workers. And of course, because everyone is realizing how terrible things are and how much better they deserve, people are still quitting from their jobs. These escalations in pay assignment are marginal and in no way adequately keep up with the inflation curve. The stats only support this more, with all kinds of references, even from the more corrupt outlets as well. Just an example from a uh, CBS survey, 60% are currently struggling to pay for rent because of inflation, um, which is according to an affiliate of CBS, since everything is a monopoly here. And notice, too, the addition of because of inflation as the question in the survey. Oftentimes, these surveys, especially if led by focus groups, marketing teams, think tanks, and institutes, purposefully choose wording to yield answers those surveyors are seeking. Any person with the faintest background in statistics listening to this now, you too know that how important language is in, service, uh, in surveys. We all know how much these questions affect how the participant answers. So perhaps it's way, it's even way more than 60%. Um, I don't know if everybody's noticed this, but there's an I in the CBS logo, which is just a little, just a little on the nose. Like maybe think of something else, just an idea. Like, wow, that's, you're not even, they're not even trying. Yeah. <sighs> Regardless, this is just merely a survey asking people what they think, and no disrespect to my fellow country persons, well, not that much disrespect, but uh, Americans aren't, you know, typically the best with um, such things as logic and reason. But even with asking citizens what they think, that still doesn't change the nature of how the actual mathematical and logistical data shows a wicked collapse of our system slowly unfolding. So instead of relying on self-reporting from some of the most lied to people on the planet, I decided to take a look at some other calculations. One of my chosen options was MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which has this living wage calculator research that seemed worth attending to. The data isn't negligible from my eyes, and I'll put it up on the screen for you guys to take a look at. And um, so while their conclusion from May of 2022 arrives at the living wage equaling roughly slightly above $24, there seems to be an issue with this data. Any person in this country who may be even slightly more knowing than what this data is saying may have some takeaways to look at. Number one, this is substantially lower than what the living wage actually ought to be of as of right now, a year later in the May of 2023, with a living wage much more accurately around $35 or $40 an hour. As noted, number two, this is the living wage, as in these are the basic costs required to live in America, not to feel or enjoy things or, you know, be alive, like feel alive on the inside. In, the other, in other words, the vast majority of the things you want to experience in life are not included with these numbers. This living wage calculates, understandably, only what it says, the living expenses, and does not include natural extra goods and services that any person would normally gravitate towards. So, not only is it shooting way below the proper score, this is still only limited to the absolutely necessary expenses. A huge oversight in these uh, calculations and numbers. And what we find after examining this information and, compar and compare it, to, of course, the federal minimum wage, 
we find the minimum wage is leagues behind what it even kinda sorta should be. And this is only reinforced further when you compare this advised living wage to the current highest state minimum wage the United States has, which is California, at $15.50 just <laughs> kind of two-thirds of the way there at as per this suggestion which is also still wrong so after acquiring somehow even more disillusionment with governmental academic and other institutional resources i decided to go a little outside the west and see if that would help before we take a dive in this section i found the quality of life index on wikipedia and take this data as you will it's much of this video is criticizing how much we compile this data or how we compile this data as well and uh this this you know quality of life index measures that the state of Re the the uh, czech republic is only four spaces down for the quality of life index from the united states um i i'm citing this because i came across this website called expatistan a uh, cost of living website created by this czech man from prague and uh, you know, looking at the information on the About Us info on their website, which is just one of the only metrics I feel is a good way of trying to figure out what the deal is with these people. There seems to be a collaborative effort, at least with this website, in compiling the data. They even inform you. Uh, they even inform you of the amount of time and people who have inputted the data. And uh, the website uses the city of Prague to compare the cost of living in the beautiful Czech Republic to all kinds of other cities. And as you can see, the United States and its various cities have insanely high, or highly insane, costs compared to other places all around the world. When we do look at the comparisons, New York costs of living are significantly, significantly higher than major cities around the world. Auckland, for example, the city I thought originally was the most expensive place to live on the planet, is actually significantly cheaper to live in when compared to New York. Even taking a look at London and Paris, they are way, way cheaper, and those are places known for their infamous problems as well. The most savory part of this information, can you take a guess? Maybe you will, maybe you won't. The two capitals of the most known and communist-affiliated nations on the planet have wickedly substantially lower cost of living than the United States. Hanoi was already killing it with 75% cheaper, but China, the great nation of China, is also once again flexing its superior economy at a whopping 61% cheaper to live in in Beijing alone. But wait, there's more! The data can also be broken down into individual commodities. We see all different kinds of exorbitant prices for commodities, which I wouldn't necessarily are bourgeois, wouldn't necessarily say are bourgeois delights. As you can see from these images I've put up, fast food, business lunch, cost of milk, chicken, potatoes, apples, even wine and Coca-Cola are all displayed, and not too easy on the wallet either, as you can see with these numbers. I gotta say, this data is pretty damn accurate. I mean, if anything, the prices are a little low. For an average, in my experience, these are not at all far from the prices I find at these godforsaken grocery stores. To help my point in this section be, be more concrete, let's compare the costs of some of these commodities to the wage that you receive. And let's say to steel man this argument to make it even stronger than what it actually is. Let's say you're lucky enough to earn $20 an hour, which is way, way below many, many people's earnings here. Literally almost a third of the federal minimum wage. This is a huge overshoot. But even with $20 an hour. What many of you, many Americans might feel, wow, that's really great pay. Tell me, do you think an hour of your labor in these times is worth two fast food meals? Is it worth 10 two liter bottles of Coca Cola? Is it worth less than four pounds of chicken? Is it worth four dozen eggs? Is it worth a box of antibiotics? Is it worth the entire cost of a business lunch, not including tip? Are eight hours of your time worth one pair of men's business shoes? To the ones out there, to the degree you find yourself debating internally if these things might be worth your labor, let me tell you something loud and clear. You are worth so much more than this. And no matter how much you think that highballing at $20 an hour might be acceptable for you, I'm telling you, and not just I, as many others will too, that you have total permission to think you deserve way, way better than that. 
You are worth way more than a business lunch and two fast food meals for an hour, an hour of your labor. And anyone who tells you otherwise does not have your best wishes and your general betterment at heart and in their mind. How do I know this confidently? Find how mu- out how much profit you personally make for the place of business that you're enslaved. I mean, I mean employed, employed, yes, mm, employed at, and find out how much you make for them in an hour at your job and come back to me and ask me, how do I know? Again, you'll find out. My fellow Americans, to those listening, if we want better, if we want our home to be better, if we want our better lives and more meaningful connection with each other in our community, if we want a country that actually gives a crap about humanity, then we need to acknowledge these costs are emulative of something truly, truly wrong in America here. But that's not even the most pressing arguments with these statistics, this information, looking at these metrics. I would argue what's most relevant, the strongest arguments in this conversation involves human goddamn rights. You have a right to life. You have a right to your basic needs being met. You don't need to fight or earn food or water or shelter. You're not entitled or complaining for standing up for your worth. Every human being, as they are on their own, is simply as they are by just being on this spherical rock, deserving of a way, way better life. Human history is a long line of exploiters using the exploited. There have been people on top, controlling and pulling the strings, keeping the working masses enslaved and asleep since the moment we moved to an agrarian lifestyle. Things like the divine right to rule seemed eternal at its time, and look at how forgettable such an absurd justification becomes after it dies. A long line of famine, diseases, empires warring and pillaging and committing heinous crimes, enslavement, even more empires, monarchies, emperors, and kings and queens, eras of the most profound suffering for the, ma- for the majority of people, and prosperity only for the smallest amount of the few. We've realized collectively Human beings deserve rights. We've decided for ourselves that ethics is important, that we should rethink how we've been doing these things and see if we can do not just better, but also do what's right. This isn't just a matter of mathematics, what makes sense, a matter of difference between labor costs and surplus value. This is a matter about what's good for us, what we deserve. We put in so much work for our bosses. We toil day after day, putting in so much effort. They so frequently ask us to go above and beyond, to add new task after new task, all for what? Breadcrumbs? A couple of business lunches, pairs of shoes, and maybe a place to sleep? I believe with every particle of my body and soul, we can achieve these changes I am advocating for. I believe we are all worth more than how we are living. But unfortunately, you have to fight for your right. It it can't be handed. It can't be given. In fact, there will always be people trying to take away good things from you. Is, Is that all we should be asking for? Or is it time to show the ruling elite that things are gonna change? Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I hope you find some of this information and my arguments interesting and compelling. I'm so lucky to have anyone click on my stuff and take a look, and I experience great fulfillment doing this work. I'm looking forward to making even more content for you guys, and uh, thanks again to just all the people who've been making um, just comments of support my way. It's it's kind of unreal how just. Um, nearly uh, universal it I've been receiving exclusively support from people and I was kind of worried at first with such um, you know with ideas that I kind of push that are typically seen as outside the Overton window if you want to use that you know um, metric but I uh, I'm beginning to think that I don't think it's as bad as I originally thought and um, I don't know. Just just thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Uh, take care.